What's up guys, welcome back to Game Dev with AI, a challenge where we develop our own indie real-time strategy game with the help of tools of AI. And the game is Nuke Them All. If it's already out, make sure go on Steam, search Nuke Them All, wishlist the game, this will really help a lot. And in this video we are gonna cover how I created amazing 2D physics for our real-time strategy game in Construct 3. Without further ado, let's get to it. First I'm gonna show you how it looks in the game and then I'll show you exactly how I made it. Physics will have two types of physics. First is a ragdoll for our blue robots. They will be flying around after explosion and falling down like it's a 3D game with physics. And the second one is ex amazing explosion of our enemy force which will generate flying parts. So let's for example destroy this tank. Big Berta, and if I destroy, you will see there will be blue guys flying around using the physics. Look at them! See, look at them go! Woo! See, they're dead. Okay, and let's explode this one. See, perfect. Those are toasted as well. Alright, and if I made a cheat code, I press K and then I can explode more. See, boom! They fly, they fall down, sometimes they break into pieces even, they react with the buildings, this one got stuck on top of the buildings, and if I explode them over the water, look what will happen. Okay, a little bit higher. See, this one fell into water and we got some splashes going. Alright, and finally the fort explosion. If I destroy the fort, the parts will start coming in as well. Let's see. Look at these parts. Game over, man. Victory! All parts go around. Mission accomplished. All right. First, for the fort, we created several um, preparation pieces in the repo layout. There will be a parts platformer father, which has hierarchy links to the platforms. These platforms, of course, are invisible, but when the fort is exploding over here, all those parts will fall into those invisible platforms, and each one of them has physics behavior. You can see it's immovable, and here you can see friction, elasticity, and all the behaviors of these platforms. They all link to the main father. This way, I only need to create the father and I don't need to create the platforms each time I explode the fort. And here are actual parts. We have big parts here with different animations. And then we have small parts like that. All right. That's the preparation we need. Now let's check the code. The code helped me to write my friend Khaled and I refined it a little bit to make it more universal. That's basically a function called destroy, destroy fort animation and the parameters are explosion x and y coordinates, the scale, if we need a head for our boss, how many pieces and the power, the impulse. So when we call this function we made a cycle which we repeat from 30 to how many times we want and also very important to check the FPS to make sure if the computer is weak or we are overloaded we don't use physics. So the first step we create actually four parts around the explosion coordinates. We choose different frames for them and we choose uh, that elevation to make sure some of them fly in the sky 
and when they are created we apply physics impulse for them you can see here the angle and then we also apply rotate to rotate the parts what else we need we need to create uh, the father which I showed you the father of the platforms which will generate all the child platforms around that we will be reacting to when the parts are falling down they will collide with the part platforms and we then disable uh, rotation and we twin the elevation to make them go down to the floor to the ground extra effects that we have is big parts also generate some dust and brick explosions particles and also they generate small parts which will also get the new impulse and also fly around a similar way and collide with the platforms what else we need to do here is again check different situations for example we need to destroy the platforms and the platforms further to make sure it doesn't stay all too long because we don't want next explosion to be colliding with old platform platforms yeah if we explore different parts in the game what else we do here you can see the code i'll quickly scroll down some of them generate smoke i attach the pin the smoke the small parts i also twin the the elevation and generate smoke and then few more things to polish the game when we collide with the river and we also collide with space and water ripple we need to destroy the parts and in case of water ripple we generate splashes this is just small polishing so that here we go let's see explosion once again all right let's see the explosion once again one two three are you ready and go look at this parts go and they fall on those invisible platforms mission accomplished the second part of adding physics to a game is adding ragdolls for ragdoll code i bought this template from construct asset store which is just five bucks i highly recommend to buy some templates it will really help you to learn and speed up your coding this little cat ragdoll cat and it's been a, a really helpful template for me once i got this template i then changed my cat to actual robot for my game i basically changed animations of the cat head body limbs and then the gun they all connected to each other by hierarchy and if we test it in a ragdoll test you will see how it will go basically it works perfectly we can drag and drop around the, our robot will fly they interact with each other with environments looks amazing especially if they're smaller then you don't need to focus on imperfections once I copied it to our game, I created two functions. First one is called create rag doll to penny. is a creation of actual doll, rag doll on coordinates X and Y. So we create the body and the rest is attached by hierarchy. So we don't need to create it. And once it's created, we apply, we enable physics for the rag doll family. And then we connect on the limbs and we also set the limits for the rotation to make sure ragdoll doesn't rotate too much. It's all well documented in this template. I just modified the script a little bit, but more or less this is the code that I purchased. And the second code, uh, the second function that I made is explode troop enemy. Again, we have explosion x and y impulse and if i need platforms or not and again i check my fps then i can check body count <laughs> and that sounds 
wrong, but okay. Just to make sure I don't have too many of them. And uh, I generate, I use, I call the function to generate my ragdolls. And after I generated them, I added small weight to make sure it doesn't overlap. And then I apply impulse to explode these poor guys. You can see here the function and the angle. And if I need platforms, I also generate, uh, I delete old platforms first, and then I create the new platforms. A really long flat platform, it's like a floor, which they will fall into. And then all my buildings, like factories and ruins, will also generate a physics box so that our flying robot can react to it. That's pretty much it. And then what we need to do is just few more polishing pieces, like for example on collision with the platforms, I generate some dust, the sound of smashing, what else, I need to destroy uh, the platforms so they don't accumulate over time. And also it's very important, in our game we have our Our pathfinding is done using a tile map. You can see here areas where they will not go. And obviously uh, they shouldn't be flying through the mountains. That's why these areas I will be also adding to the physics with the following coordinates, with the following parameters. When our tile map is created, I make it removable and disable physics, not to make load on the system. And I only enable physics when I actually create a ragdoll, it's over here. This way we only create physics just for those 10-15 seconds when we're exploding something and creating ragdolls and the rest of the game, we don't create any load on the game. And a few more little polishing details like we're overlapping with the water, we make splashes, we overlap with lava, we destroy, things like this. So, and then what else, I added some delay, so we overlap with mountains, for example, after 3 seconds delay, this way we don't bounce too much and we let the body first fly and then we change the boolean ready to overlap in 3 seconds using the timer and this way when they start flying we can enable physics a little bit later and let's see finally how it works in the game. Welcome Commander, Operation Red Planet, all systems go. So now, for example, I'll destroy some of the equipment, for example this tank, and uh, if I destroy it, blue guys will appear flying, see, look at them go, and they will react to the mountain, see, this one got stuck in the mountain and his limbs fell apart, this one died here, this is fully done by physics. Let's destroy another one. See? We keep flying Great as well. Choice, Commander. Mobile artillery production is in progress. Perfect. See? It works really smooth and it adds really nice touch to the game. And finally, when you win, we will see the pieces fly. Look at this. Mission accomplished. Victory. Perfect. Mission accomplished. That's all for today guys, I hope you found this quick video helpful and if you like my game please wishlist it on Steam, nuke them all, it will really help a lot. And if the demo is available, you can install and play it as well. That's all for today, take care, cheers, bye.